Everyone uses the concept of a moral subject, but do we know what we're talking about? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you mean by a moral subject? Please comment below so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe that thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can discuss thought, subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. Foucault studied the practices of self in Greek and Roman antiquity as a strategic point of contrast with his own present time. This work showed how the subject was differentially practiced, how subjectivity is not a continuum or a foundation over which society is formed, but rather is itself a social, historical, cultural construction, therefore something that changes over time. Furthermore, in demonstrating how the problematizations and practices of self shift, Foucault also showed that they are not stable, Thus, they are not all encompassing at any one time. Being always in a state of negotiation with its contemporaneity, which is not devoid of difference. Foucault thus provides with his work the possibility of a history of subjectivity, the opening of discussion of subjectivity not as stable or unitary, but rather as always constituted and in the making by the social, cultural and political milieu. This understanding of subjectivity as a process, Foucault names subjectivation. The process of subjectivation, Foucault shows, varies considerably from one social, cultural, political formation to another. In Greek antiquity, he writes, subjects did not readily from the start possess truth, as in later Christian culture and nowadays, but rather they performed an aesthetics of existence. This aesthetics of existence consisted in principles that subjects needed to pay attention to in order to prepare themselves to live within truth. The subject was not, as in later Christian culture, thought to possess an inherent capacity to live in the true. Greek free men, not women or slaves, were expected to take care of the self by observing certain limits, such as excess of food, drink, or sex, to place their actions within a certain schema of nature, observing if the weather is hot or cold, for example, and to combine it with their own hot and cold activities in response, among other activities where the subject had to continually test, experiment, to come up with the truth about itself, about himself. Greek free men were supposed to follow their prescriptions of their social field in order to continue being free and in order to be closer to the truth. The realm of activities that the men were to follow, expected by their peers, was that of moderation. This meant that one was constantly evaluating the circumstances of one's action with relation to the larger social and environmental field in which one existed. This larger field in constant change and flux due to, due to the change of social and environmental circumstances could not be transformed into a code of action of norms, of laws, precisely because what constitutes it is change. There is no codification of behavior for the Greek free man of antiquity. There are only signs that need the constant interpretation of the subject in order to produce itself as either free or unfree. Clearly, this practice only functioned for men, with women and slaves being regarded as unfree from the start, and Foucault himself qualified the practices of the Greeks of antiquity as limiting with relation to a freedom of action. Truth was not readily available to the Greek men of antiquity. 
only through moderation would a certain closeness to truth be legitimated. Foucault explains it this way, citation. The relation to truth was a structural, instrumental, and ontological condition for establishing the individual as a moderate subject, leading a life of moderation. It was not an epistemological condition, enabling the individual to recognize himself in his singularity as a desiring subject and to purify himself of the desire that was thus brought to light. Foucault, History of Sexuality, Volume 2. Here then, Foucault compares in the manner of a genealogist the relation between subject and truth in ancient Greece with the dominant present-day relationship in the West via the history of Christianity. If the Greek free men had to always evaluate themselves in relations with others, with the city, with nature, and on the other hand, the subject of Christian morality only needs to look within himself to find his truth. Nothing more distant and different from ancient Greece than the moral subject. To attain truth, the Greek free man had first to establish for himself a routine of observations of limits and self-control. The subject had to be master of itself. Only then could he govern others well. There was thus a direct relationship between the subject, his striving for truth, and a social and political life. Foucault says this relation was structural, instrumental, and ontological. Thus, it was not only a means toward an end, it was the process of the formation of subjectivity itself or subjectivation. Processes of subjectivation are always contingent upon culture, history, politics, and society. Foucault shows how these processes have changed in, over history. Under the specific instance of Greek antiquity, the self should know itself in order to better govern itself, being then able to govern others and the city. In Christian and modern subjectivities, the self is organized in relation to truth through a biopolitical order, having to rely on knowledge, technology, and markets in order to align itself with truth. However, this truth is, through biopower, readily present, or at least available to the subject. There is no ascesis or ascetic practice here as there existed for the Greeks. The modern biopolitical subject, in order to access truth, needs only to be fully itself, to maximize itself in relation to truth, that makes the self more able to realize its own inherent capacity for truth. This maximization, this empowerment of the subject in relation to the truth about itself in the bio biopolitical order happens through an alignment of the subject with truths that are formed by the market, technologies, knowledge production, and practice, practices of dominant institutions. Therefore, what the biopolitical order creates is an empowered subject, the domesticated moral subject. A subject who believes and reproduces truths about itself that bind him to dominant power structures that control him, at least partially. Foucault also shows how a third element between ancient Greece and modern Christianity also brought shifts in the subjective realm, changes in the subjective realm. The third element, imperial Rome, shifted the Greek imagination of prescriptive orders for an aesthetic of existence into a rational universal order that dictated behavior. This was already a shift in the practice of freedom because freedom became something that one either had or didn't have and not, as with the Greeks, founded on the care of the self and on moderation. Now freedom became something you have or don't have, and not, as with the Greeks, uh, different from the Greeks, where freedom was to be a continuous practice.
the Greeks had what can be called a politicized subjectivity in which truth was a political and aesthetic practice and process. The subject to live within truth had to practice it, test it, change it, and this practice was on the whole social and political. With Christianity, this changes to a certain depoliticization and privatization of truth and subjectivity. Truth of the self within dominant Christian culture is part of a process of subjectivation that established its foundation outside of political life and contains truth within the private interiority of the subject. Political life, in fact, is precisely what is absent in dominant Christianity and secular Christian culture. It is that which is corrupt from the start. The Christianized communities of the world, the westernized, modernized, all participate in a field of relations where what is produced is a political sphere where truth is absent. Truth in this dominant culture, today secularized and based on Christian forms of subjectivity, produces a normalized subject that sees itself as the origin of true thoughts. In the biopolitical order, one of the subjectivations present is that of the alignment of the subjective realm to truth and morality. The good and evil discourse in secular Christian culture is one of the most productive of forms of social, cultural, political, and historical domination. That secularization takes radically different departures depending on who speaks, and as such is always different and possibly doomed to be so, is a remark that Talal Assad, for example, has repeatedly made. He has stated that secularism produces other things than only that which it claims to be for, namely equality, justice, freedom, etc. Secular Christian values are produced in countries like Brazil and the United States, for example, and they never seem to be shaken by the realities of historical violences perpetrated in their names. In the name of justice, equality, freedom, etc., the worst abuses and wars and violences are committed. Wars on others are always just and fair under the dominant culture. They are justified on the basis of a higher good. With Christianity, a hermeneutics of the subject came to be, a process of subjectivation that acts through the constant investigation by subjects of themselves as subjects of intentions, motivations, and desires. For the subject understands himself as the origin of himself and his world and his actions. He does not understand himself as the subject of political, ethical, and cultural relations primarily. The production of the subjective as one and the same with a fundamental drive called desire coupled with the constant policing of this desire to know its origin in good or evil intentions, is subjectivation at work within Christianized Western cultures. This form of analysis makes us suspect that when discussing world events as subjects implicated in them, Western culture will tend to understand every event as a manifestation of a moral order in which it prescribes the world only to rescue what itself produced and projected to the world as explanation. World, social, cultural, and historical realities are secondary to the primacy of interiority in dominant discourses of secular Christian culture. The primacy of interiority over actions was pointed by Nietzsche as a fundamental trace of a moral order. The moral order is what came to dominate and thus came to trace every action in the world back to a cause in a subject. The primacy of an interiority over action came to be established through processes of subjectivation. This is the history of subjectivity in the West that Nietzsche opened and that Foucault explored 
much further. We will continue this exploration in our next video, Subjectivation and Truth, Part 2. See you then.